I remember Mike had such an interest in farming. Quick as he would get home from school, why he would want to uh, go to his dad. I was planting a mile, half a mile. He jumped out of the car. I remember I can see him coming across that field. He was just just running to get to his dad, and that was where I knew there was a connection with him and I. So anyway, I have had 20, probably 24, 25 years farming with Mike, which was the best years of my life. Wet and Black Orchards has been in existence for starting its fifth generation, and we started out as a, my grandfather as a small dairy who planted a small orchard, and then my father decided that he wanted to be an apple grower rather than a dairy farmer, and so that's how we've evolved into primarily an apple-focused organization. I think the best part of having the farm pass from generation to generation is the opportunity to pass the knowledge. I may only have one year of experience officially on the farm, but I feel like I have 70 plus in some ways because I've gotten to learn so much from grandpa and from my dad. So that's a big key, I think, to the success of our farm. Apple growing, like many other businesses, I believe, changes dramatically. It seems like each and every year, if I look back through the past, it changes in terms of the way we plant and we care for our trees, to so the types of systems and trees that we do plant. My family here, in order to stay active in the apple industry, have got to be leaders in this change, not followers. They got to be one step ahead. Lake Michigan moderates our climate, so we have cool nights and sunny days that help us color fruit and make it very flavorful. More flavorful than any other state. There's some of them I put my teeth into and the juice just comes down my cheeks and drips off. And that's a mixture of the climate we have, the water we have, all the things that, that make us apple so beautiful. <laughs>